Oliver and Chumpy, Stories 37 to 42, Volume 7. Thriller, April Volcano and Santa's Chocolate Factory by Werner Stesco. Is this your first encounter with Oliver and Chumpy? Yes? Then let me tell you about them. Oliver is an elegant tomcat and Chumpy is his best friend. They are always on the lookout for new adventures together. Oliver lives in a tree house on the mighty oak tree. He is the most famous cat in the country. Triller by Werner Stesco Illustrator Macy N. Reyes Triller loved to sing. Every evening he would fly up to a branch on the apple tree and sing a pretty tune. His voice was so exceptional that all creatures listened in wonder. I was one of Triller's admirers. One day I heard about a singing contest coming to the fairy's castle. I urged Triller to audition. He was very shy, but everybody thought he would be a perfect contestant. The day of the audition arrived. Now it was Triller's turn. I'm singing my own song. It's called Spring in the Air. Triller's rendition was very beautiful. Everybody applauded wildly. He was a total success and we were very proud. Then Triller lost his voice. What do I do now? He croaked hoarsely. You have to rest. Don't talk. Inhale and drink chamomile tea with honey. The fairy queen had heard of his problem. She arrived with a magic potion to restore Triller's voice. It was distilled from the sun's rays and the moon's cold light. Together they are the most powerful force in the universe. With such valuable help nothing could stop Triller's final glory and he won the prize. At the ceremony, he received a dragonfly made of precious colorful stones as prize. Who would ever guess that our Triller was having such success? That delightful voice of his nobody ever wants to miss. I promised myself to join the next competition. After all, my meows are pretty classy too. Trilly bye. Buds are breaking through the bark. Flowers soon will make their mark. What a joy those mild days bring. Awake desires to fly and sing. Winter's hardship is in the past. Summer now approaching fast. We celebrate this joyful time. Join in to sing this little rhyme. A volcano endangers our heroes. April Volcano by Werner Stesco Illustrator Macy N. Reyes
It was the first day of April, a day to play a prank on somebody. After breakfast, I jumped off the veranda. Unfortunately, I should have checked out my destination first. I landed in a barrel full of water. Jumpy and Joey called April Fool. While we were thinking of naughty pranks, I noticed a trail of smoke coming from our tallest mountain. There was also a faint rumbling noise. Suddenly, sparks of fire erupted from the peak. We decided to hike near the mountain to enjoy the spectacular sight. The closer we came to the volcano, the noisier the sound of the eruption. By now, a lot of ash was falling on us, just like snow. It started to get very hot. With a deafening bang, the whole top of the mountain blew apart. The enormous explosion hurled huge rocks all over the mountainside. We could see that lava had surrounded our hill. We were cut off. Jumpy chose a sleek tree, broke it off and made a pole of it. She jumped as high as she could, while pushing herself with the pole across the boiling lava. The forest animals were scared and fled to the plain. The earth started to rumble and shake. We were frightened. Everybody came to the lake. We would be safe in the water. This was going to be the biggest party ever. Due to the eruption, a clear hot spring was now bubbling into the lake, warming it up. This became a gathering place. All in all, this April Fool's Day will be remembered for a long time in Zealandia. Fiery pie. Do you like chocolate? Santa's Chocolate Factory by Werner Stasko Illustrator Macy Ann Reyes It was open house at Santa's Chocolate Factory in the clouds with free sweets. We took the kangaroo shuttle there. Jumpy's husband was the pilot. We boarded Dino and were soon flying through big white clouds, passing through a thunderstorm. Lightning was flashing all around us. The factory was a peculiar building, just floating between the clouds. Santa's factory looked like the witch's house in Hansel and Gretel. It was just as edible too. But we could not nipple anything because Santa was outside the door. Welcome, welcome. Please enter and try our goodies. There were many delicious delights. What can I say? I knew that chocolates are not good for cats and hoped that my belly would not be upset. In the factory, an orangutan was stirring hot chocolate. Squirrels were pouring liquid chocolate into molds. In another room, 
Chimpanzees checked the quality of the pralines. They would eat any that were not up to standard. Would you like to work there? We had lost Joey in the large crowd. It was time to depart and he was nowhere to be found. We thought he might have returned to Zealandia by himself. So we flew back. But Joey was not waiting for us there. With no more flights today, we had no choice but to wait until the next morning. Joey had been very naughty. He had hidden in a closet before the factory shut its doors. Once everyone was quiet, he had tiptoed out to the storage area. Joey was so tempted by the pictures that he opened one box after another. He kept eating and eating until he fell asleep exhausted. Ho ho ho! What gifts! Santa exclaimed, waking Joey. Your parents must be missing you, naughty boy. Chumpy was relieved to embrace her very sweet-smelling son. Don't hug me, Mum. My belly will explode. I will never eat chocolate again, Joey exclaimed. Do you believe him? Chucky pie. Thank you very much for reading Oliver and Chumpy. You are now a special friend and you will be able to take part in all their adventures.